going to seven in our complex numbers topic. We've had a look already at what complex numbers are and a little bit about the arithmetic of complex numbers so that we can use them in calculations. So a complex number is a number in the sense that we can calculate with it. We can, it can be the answer to the, the solution to an equation. We can also represent that number uh, not in a number line as our normal kind of real numbers we could re represent on a, a horizontal number line, but we can also, we can display in a kind of number line. Uh, and that's because complex numbers have two parts. They've got a real part and an imaginary part. And so one of the things that was developed was the idea of rep representing a complex number using a, a coordinate axis system. Um, and instead of, for instance, having your x and y axis, you could have the real part along the x axis and the imaginary part up by the y axis. And by doing so, we could represent both the real and imaginary parts of the number. So we don't have a number line for complex numbers, but we have a, a coordinate grid. Now there's actually two types of diagrams that we can use, two types of uh, graphs that we can use. And the first one would be that kind of Cartesian type, and the other one would be what's called polar form. And both of these are types of Argand diagrams. An Argand diagram, as on the, uh, the screen there, is simply the name that we give to an illustration uh, of a complex number on a diagram. So there's two types. What are the two different types and for, for what use are there? Well, as I said, there were two types of diagram. The first, the one we're most familiar with, is the Cartesian plane, where each um, axis has a scale to it, and we can plot a point based on how far it is along each axis, and we can plot a point uh, based on its vertical and horizontal components. And that's really good for demonstrating addition and subtraction. We'll come across polar form or polar uh, coordinates later on, but they're particularly good for multiplying and dividing and for showing that uh, in an illustration. So first of all, we're going to have a look at our Cartesian diagram. Now, as I just displayed up above, we have um, on the left-hand side here, we've got our axes, which are labeled real and imaginary. We just use the first two letters which means we can co we can plot any um, complex number. So for instance, if this were the number 3 plus 2i, then we would label the axis 3 and the real axis 2 in the, in the imaginary axis, and we could say that this point here, z equals 3 plus 2i. We sometimes, we've got this line, you could just mark it as an x marked spot, uh, sometimes you see this line being drawn, not because the line represents the number, uh, but for reasons that we're going to show you, it, can, it does look a bit like a vector quantity. It's not got a direction uh, to it, but if you look at the diagram on the right-hand side, um, we've got the idea we can illustrate addition by simply saying that one complex number plus another complex number, it's addition or it will give us the, the third complex number, Z3. That's not too big a deal, but we can illustrate addition and subtraction really easily, a bit like we add vectors. And this is what uh, an Argand diagram would look like. If our uh, complex number had negative components, we would simply use the, the other three quadrants of the diagram. So let's try that, example seven plot these complex numbers on Argand diagrams. So the first example here, we've got two complex numbers, 5 plus 3i and negative 1 minus 3i. I'm going to plot them both on the same diagram. So I'll put a nice four quadrant coordinate system. This is the real axis and this is the imaginary axis. And I want to plot the the complex number 5 plus 3i, effectively, it's going to be located at the 
the virtual point five three. We don't use coordinates, but that's basically what you're going to think about here. So I'm going to mark five on my real axis and kind of relatively not as far up the imaginary axis by three. Notice we don't put three i, we just put three. And at the intersection of those two points, I can put a little x and say z equals five plus three i. And I'm going to put a wee line from the origin to my complex number. Okay, we're going to talk a wee bit more about um, the development of that. So there's our complex number, 5 plus 3i. The second one, negative 1 minus 3i. On well, negative 1, it's clearly going to be a little distance to the left of the origin. And negative 3i is going to be the same distance down here. There's negative 3. So my complex number is going to be at the intersection of those two points. And I can draw that. So the line kind of helps us to uh, draw our eye to where the, the numbers are. It helps to see relative uh, distances and, um, and, and angles and things like that. Because in actual fact, the distance, the length of those lines is going to become really important in a little while. And also the angle uh, that those lines make. So that's how to plot a complex number on an argand diagram. Let's have a look at the second one. Um, because these are, well, technically not complex numbers. Two of them are real, two of them are imaginary. They don't really have the, the double part, real and imaginary part. But we can still plot them on an argand diagram. And because these ones are all connected. There's our origin. So the first one, i, just means one unit up the imaginary axis. There's no real part to it. So effectively here, if I put a 1, that represents the value i. We could draw a line up the imaginary axis, but you won't really see it particularly. Negative 1 is a real number on the real axis. Negative i is the number of which we find at negative 1 on the imaginary axis, and 1 is obviously the, the real uh, value number 1. So these are all on the real or imaginary axis, and that's always the case when you either have only a real part or only an imaginary part. Okay, So that's our Cartesian-Argand diagram, and you should be able to plot uh, a complex number on a diagram like this. So hopefully you can go and practice that. Make sure your diagrams are really neat, straight lines, well marked like that. Okay.